The start of term for most children will be delayed now for more than two weeks in order to help stop the spread of coronavirus. Exam year students will now return on the 11th of January with other secondary school students to follow a week later. Yeah, most primary schools will return on the 4th of January, but high infection rates mean some areas in London, Essex, Kent, East Sussex, uh, Buckinghamshire and Hertfordshire are not expected to reopen for face-to-face -face teaching, which could affect over one million primary school children. Well, Education Secretary Gavin Williamson joins us now. Good morning to morning. you. Good morning. Uh, so the schools were meant to open on the, the 4th of January, all of them. That was going to be the start of term. You made the announcement yesterday that that would be uh, set back. Uh, it feels like it's a little bit late in the day when you've got uh, teachers and unions uh, calling for a decision much earlier. We we knew about lockdowns, we knew about the new strain weeks ago. Uh, why has it taken so long to make that announcement? Well, we're going to be seeing over 85% of primary schools returning as normal on Monday of next week. Uh, we've had to make this uh, uh, late decision. And of course, we always want to give people the maximum amount of notice, but we're dealing with a rapidly changing and rapidly evolving public health situation in terms of a new strain of coronavirus. And uh, of course, we always want to give people more notice. But when, before Christmas, uh, we wanted to see the rollout, the option of... Uh, for all secondary schools to have the option of rolling out mass testing in those schools. But we recognise with the spread of this virus, uh, instead of that being an option, we would require all schools to have this mass testing regime. And in order to shifting from that being optional to being a requirement, we recognise we needed to give them that bit of extra time in order to get that mass testing regime set up so that it's not just for the benefit of pupils, it's not just for the benefit of staff, it's also for the benefit of a whole community as we mass test millions of youngsters and identify more where COVID is because uh, obviously if my children come back, they've had a positive test, it's not just about them self-isolating, it's about me and my, uh, my child's whole household isolating, uh, protecting the community. You'd forgive young people and parents for, for not really trusting what you say though because there, there, there have been so many U-turns, so many uh, late announcements, I mean so many U-turns, it's like an O-turn, we sort of go round and round, don't we, and we never really really know uh, what's going on until the last minute. Uh, and and pe that really does affect parents who work, who will be hoping to have worked on Monday, but now won't be able to because they would have found out so late. Do you accept that everybody else seems to be saying things and then the government acts in response afterwards? It's not like you're leading from the front. Well, it's really easy to be acting as a commentator. It's obviously much harder to be able to take those decisions and then implement them. But at every stage, the government has sought to act swiftly uh, and in a responsible way, making sure that we are dealing with uh, an incredibly complex, rapidly evolving public health crisis. This isn't just affecting this country, but affecting countries right across the globe. But yes, it does put an enormous pressure on everyone. And it's not just within schools, it's right across the nation. We've all, uh, everyone in Britain has had to make an enormous sacrifice, uh, had to go to enormous lengths in order to be able to deal with this. Uh, but, you know, we do see uh, hope into the future. You see the announcement of the new Oxford University AstraZeneca uh, vaccine being approved. You'll see the mass rollout of not just the AstraZeneca, but the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, millions of people getting that vaccine over the coming months. This is what, this is the game changer that we've all been waiting for. But we still have to ask people to do those extraordinary things. And none of us want to have to ask people to do that. But we do doing it to protect those who are most vulnerable in society. Can we get some uh, more information about how these decisions were made? Because there are those people who are asking how you decided which primary schools were going to close and which ones were going to stay open, because not all Tier 4 primaries will be open. Um, Sadiq Khan was talking about this. He says council leaders, head teachers and governing bodies weren't consulted. He's urgently seeking clarity on why schools in some London boroughs have been chosen to stay open. So what was the criteria for which primary schools would close and which would stay open? Well, you can 
completely understand as education secretary, I want to see all schools open to welcome all children at all stages. But we had to listen very carefully to the public health advice that we were given. Uh, this was a decision that's uh, taken jointly by the health secretary uh, and myself, looking at the data, not just in terms of infection rates, but uh, the latest data that Public Health England, uh, the uh, Department for Health have in terms of the speed and rate of increase, but also looking at the pressure that hospitals are under and that they're having to deal with. But you take the decision to close uh, any school with an incredibly heavy heart. I, I want to see children in school. I I've seen it with my own eyes, with my own children, of how much they benefit from being in school and how much they miss from being out of school. So, you know, it is with great reluctance that we have to do it. But where the public health advice, uh, where the, you know, sort of working together with the Department for Health, uh, we look at that evidence, we look at that advice and uh, only very reluctantly make the decision to close schools if that's absolutely necessary. Um, I'm afraid one of the newspapers today is not, it's not giving you a very good uh, mark for the way that the news was delivered yesterday. They're giving you a, a C- minus because of the fact that you were announcing that some primary schools would be closed and referring people to the government website, which at the time didn't have the information on it. People were left a little bit in the dark, weren't they, after that? Uh, well, the, the information went up uh, before five o'clock uh, yesterday uh, when it was due to uh, go up before the Prime Minister's statement. And uh, we obviously wanted to share that information as rapidly as possible. Um, obviously, um, you know, if we if we always had uh, advance notice as to, you know, how this virus would sort of uh, mutate and evolve, uh, we'd obviously uh, be in a much better position, but we having to respond at incredible speed uh, to events that unfold. And of course, we want to give people the maximum notice, both not just schools, but as you rightly say, parents as well who have plans. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we don't always have the luxury that we would like for what we always endeavour to do. The moment that we have clarity, when we have a decision, we always share that immediately, not just with stakeholders, not just with schools and uh, the teaching profession, uh, but also with parents and children at okay. the earliest okay. possible moment. Well, I, I tell you one thing parents and children would like to know is whether the exams will go ahead um, this summer. Can you guarantee that they will? Yes, and that's why we took the move to... Uh, keep uh, those children who are in those exam cohorts, those exam years, so uh, years 11 and years 13, uh, still coming into school from the 11th of January, making sure that the first ones back into school, uh, into secondary schools, even in those areas that have those extra restrictions that are imposed on them, those children will still be going into school, still be studying. They'll be getting remote education from the 4th of June, but they'll be going into face-to-face -face teaching on the 11th, uh, sorry, uh, 11th of, uh, 4th of January, and they'll be going in for face-to-face -face teaching uh, on the 11th of January. And when we look at the provisions that are in place, because, you know, there are those who are saying that for remote learning to work, we need to make sure children have got the right equipment. That was promised, but, but hasn't been delivered in the way that was expected. Also, when we look at the situation with mass testing, which is going to be vital, there's a lot of concern from head teachers about how this is going to work. There's not adequate support. The army have been brought in to help, but this is going to be virtual online help only. There are real concerns looking ahead about how all this is going to work in practice. So, so there are real challenges. We've already distributed over 550,000 laptops to schools across the country uh, over the last few months. Uh, from the 4th of January over that week, another 150,000 laptops are going to be distributed in that week. Uh, we're going to be distributing a total of a million laptops uh, to help and support schools and, of course, those children who are from the most disadvantaged and vulnerable background. But in terms of a mass testing regime that we're rolling out across uh, all schools, we are giving 
schools that extra support. The reason that we've taken the decision to move back the, the start of term is to give them that extra time in order to get everything ready because we're, uh, we're telling schools that we uh, expect them to put these systems in place. But we're also backing that up with an extra £78 million of funding. On the 4th of January, every school is going to be receiving the uh, testing kits, the PPE, uh, all the... Um, all the equipment that they need in order to be able to roll out this mass testing uh, regime in every single secondary school across the country. And the armed forces have been doing an amazing job because they're not just, uh, they are offering that sort of training and support. And of course, they've been doing this uh, for many, many weeks and months now and doing it absolutely brilliantly from places such as Liverpool, right across the country. Um, They'll be offering that guidance, they'll be offering that support. But in those exceptional circumstances where schools, uh, despite being provided with the equipment, despite being get, given the guidance and all the information and the, the training and the support in order to be able to set this up, despite being given right. the extra £78 million pounds, yeah. uh, of so extra we're, financial we're aid... We're running short of time. Um, uh, we will also, yeah. the armed forces, in those exceptional circumstances, be able to come in, help those schools get set up uh, if they've not been able to do it themselves. But schools are incredibly okay. Uh, okay. resourceful organisations, and I'm sure they're able to do it, but there's a backup yeah. there for them. Yeah, OK. Gavin Williamson, uh, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.